What's up, people? GNR TV, streaming done right. It has all the channels that you would want. You know, the regular channels, channels from out of state, pay-per-views, sports, the movie channels, porn. It has over 2,000 channels in general. Over 2,000 channels. $20 a month for two devices now. Not one, but two devices for 20 bucks, and you get all that amazing stuff. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, there's no sports right now. There's not really many pay-per-views. Well, guess what? There is sports because UFC is back. And there's pay-per-views because guess what? UFC is back, and the rest of the sports will be back eventually, and it's worth it. This app is freaking amazing. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. I've had it for a little over a year now. I'm never going to get rid of it, and I love it. I love it so much. GNR TV, streaming done right. If you don't have it, you need to get it. And enjoy the rest of the show. Let's get slicing and dicing with Sir Sturdy Horror fans. On this podcast, you will hear me and a guest do some movie reviews, random funny horror chats, and whatever else comes to mind. So tune in, kick back, relax, and always remember, I'll see you in your nightmares. Jason's mask. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Another episode of Horror Star Sturdy. I got my guy Jack here today. Jack, how you doing, man? I'm doing good, man. Doing good. It's a Tuesday, and uh yeah, just a typical Tuesday. <laughs> Speaking of Tuesdays, man, I've been getting, since this whole quarantine crap has been going on, like, I'm out of work, but I'm getting mm-hmm. to stay home. So I'm getting my regular salary to stay home, which is great. But yeah, days mix up all the time. Like, I woke up today thinking it was Wednesday, and it, I'm, I don't know. <laughs> Damn. I don't know. No, no, dude, I get you. I had... I get it. I had my kids the last two weeks and um, they were leaving. They left on Sunday and on Friday, for some reason, I just like, you know, when you have kids and you're not paying attention to the days or anything, just it shit just, just goes crazy in your brain. And I was texting their mother and I'd be like, so uh, you come and pick them up tomorrow. What time? And she's like on Sunday, Jack. And I'm like, what? Then I look at my phone Friday. Holy shit, my bad. You know, it's, it, it makes me, it, she's like, why doesn't anyone ever listen to me? I was like, it's not you, okay? It's, it's literally me. It's, it's, it's not you, it's me. Yeah. yeah, it actually is, was that. It was me. I had no idea because um, this quarantine is just screwing everything up, honestly. Um, and there's a lot of things I'm not looking forward to after the quarantine. Um, but we could talk about that when, when, when it comes up, whatever questions you have about that for me. But, uh, but yeah, it's Tuesday. Yay. We could jump right into it, man. I mean, like for me, Mm -hmm. the good thing about the quarantine, I will say minus everybody getting sick and all the negative stuff about it. But the good thing about it is like, I'm getting to work on my podcast a shit ton more. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's, 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 that's what a lot of people are doing. Like, uh, you know, and honestly, it's because of this quarantine that I found out about, you know, what the people I'm involved with now, uh, with the Romero picture, Indie Brigade, you know, it's because of the quarantine. They had the DEF CON one, the very first online convention ever. Awesome. And yeah, which is amazing. Yes. And, and it's because of that convention, I got involved. And ever since then, I mean, I got their merch, I got their shirts. Well, today I'm actually wearing a friend of mine's uh, company. It's called, uh, swolesgymgear.com if you like to work out check out swolesgymgear.com tell them jack sent you uh but yeah um like i love all this indie stuff i like to buy like merch you know i've been buying like blu-rays and crazy during uh during this quarantine and supporting all my friends you know all the stores are closed so i i love i love thrift stores that's like my jam you know like i i just I love thrift stores. So the money I would spend in thrift stores, I'm buying like my friends' movies. Mm-hmm. So it, it works out, you know, it's, and you know, it's well, supporting them. I'm with you on that. Like I'm, I'm a huge, huge fan of supporting small business. And oh, like, yes. like this right here, the nightmare shop, my friends out in St. Louis, ah. 
they have – I don't know if the sale's still going on. I think it is. But there was, like, the first 25 people to buy whatever online from their shop. They're going to send you a free, uh-huh. free Blu-ray, which they just did. This, so I just did that last night. And then with this, they sent me this. They oh, sent me like this hat. But it's called The Nightmare Shop. They have a Facebook page. And they're ah, I need to get with them and get some sponsorship going, dude. I'd love to team up with, with something like that and, you know, get their merch in my films like oh. that. I love helping out people. And I'm, I'm, I'm the same way though. Like I'm just like, Hey man, just shoot it my way. Like what I do was speaking of cons, when I would go to like, you know, when, when everything was normal, when I would go out to cons, I'd hit up a few of my friends that have shops, especially these guys and like other horror podcasts. Yeah. If you guys have business cards, send me your business cards. I'm going to be at this con at such and such a weekend. I'm having a table with my podcast. I'll put them out mm-hmm. on my table and all that stuff for you guys. Oh, really? You'd really do it? Yeah. I said, the only thing I ask for is just do me the same. Just do the same thing if you get the chance. I'll send you some business cards. And with these guys right here, yeah. the shop, yeah. I sent them a ton of business cards. And every time, before, again, before this thing went down, anytime they went to a con or had something mm-hmm. going on, they had my business cards sitting out there and just – it's awesome. It's real awesome. They always show support. I always show love to them. And well, well, Nightmare Shop, if you're listening, hook a brother up. I'll hook you up. You hook me up. Oh, Boom. they're 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 trust me, man. They're they're great, great, great guys. They're huge horror fans. And it's just two like two Who? guys grew up, two guys, they're best friends. Uh huh. They just wanted to do Who are they? Their name I may is, know. Uh, Greg and John. I'll send you more information about okay. problems. But yeah, man, it's just I'm one of those huge supporters of horror, like if I can support as far as like the Indiegogos, if I can back those, I do back those. Because mm-hmm. I just feel, I mean, again, I'm a huge horror fan and I'm the type of person I want people to succeed. So it's like, if right. this, this person's dream, I know they don't make money off the project most, for the most part, but if this is their dream, yeah, why not help throw a few dollars if you have the extra money? And I'm the type of person, again, say this same movie is going to come out in stores at Walmart. Why not just get it right from the, pro- why not just get it right from the people and be a part? Exactly. Yeah. Indie Gogos, which I do love, is it makes fans feel like they're a part of something. As far as like, mm-hmm. you know, you you throw your thirty, forty bucks in there, you get a Blu-ray, you get your name in the credits. You saying that you can spend that same yeah. same amount of money to get the movie from Walmart, mm-hmm. and you know, it's 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 just not the same. Yeah. Right and, now, they're, they're, oh, go ahead. No, I'm just saying you're kind of helping it come out as far as helping with the. Whatever. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I do agree with that. Uh, there's only one thing I disagree with about the, the campaigns right now. I don't think uh, during this quarantine, this pandemic, running an online campaign during this is a, is a smart move. And I think any campaign that started beforehand and is still going on during this, I think they should... Uh, stop the campaign and refund people's money, okay? And then after this pandemic, start it up again so they can give again because people are losing jobs. The money they gave to these campaigns was money they had coming in at the time and they don't have it anymore. So if you're giving to this stuff during, you know, if you're promoting this stuff during when no one's getting money or are out of jobs, you know, like there's, I don't know, like 30 million people out of work in America, you know, like, give the money back to the fans because if they're your real fans and they'll see you helping them out, you know, and then they'll give more when they can, when it comes back, it's all about respect. And when, 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 I'm sorry, I got to turn my messenger off. I'm getting all group messages. Uh, But when, when they, if they see you doing that, they'll respect your project way more than ever before because, you know, you might be like low on funds and then you remember, Oh wait, I gave like 60 or $75 to this campaign. And the next thing you know, you get that money back in your account, dude, how, yeah. you'd want to spend like 150 on them when you have the money again. I, I get so right. yeah, I, I'm just, Yeah. So that that's how I feel. Yeah, no, I I get it. And since since we're discussing the indie scene, yeah, stuff like that. How do you feel about like? Because I see it just being a being a podcaster. I see it a lot more now. The negativity in the indie scene, mm-hmm. people just against each other, maybe taking ideas and just stuff like that. Like the real negative thing. Like I've I've had mm-hmm. I'll say I've had fallen outs with people, but I don't like for me. Yeah. 
I don't, I don't talk about it publicly. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's whatever, it's water under the bridge. It's nothing. It was nothing was ever that serious to the point to where I feel like I have to bash somebody's name to where they say they did something to my family or something like that to where I have to go that serious. Mm -hmm. I just, I'm just like out of sight, out of mind. Um, I don't talk about them good or bad. Cause I don't, cause you know, the, the saying good promo, bad promo, whatever I, you get none. From yeah. It. Once, once that happens, right. it's done. It's over. Screw it. There's yeah. Back. Uh, w w well, there's, with that being said, I have a rule of thumb, and it might not be the most positive rule of thumb, but it protects me and my company and my friends and the people I work with, and it's called no second chances. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason I say that, I've said this, like, even, like, it, I learned during the military, well, not, actually, I learned it from my film partner, Chad Clinton Freeman, the one who, who started uh, Southern Psychos Productions with, um, mm -hmm. Once someone screws you over and like what you're saying, you know, shame on them, you know, and, and it's cliche to say, screw me twice, shame on me. But the thing is, I don't let it get to that point. Once you do me dirty, once something bad happens in that aspect, I for, I'll forgive you, but I'll never work with you again. Yep. You know, I am about forgiveness, but it's protecting me. And when it comes to stealing ideas, you know, like my, my franchise, uh, Paranoia Tapes, it was inspired, it definitely, like, it, not a complete copy, but inspired by VHS. Okay, they have uh, three hit films. Mm -hmm. uh, the last one, not everyone's a fan of, but the quality was through the roof. But um, the, the whole, that whole type of style, you know, inspired me and my franchise to now I have nine paranoia tapes plus one, like a recut of the first one coming out. So, you know, I, I didn't steal the idea. I was inspired. Now, when it comes to stealing, there are people in the industry, in the indie scene that are stealing ideas and coming up with ideas that aren't original. Um, like someone like in the last couple months, and I haven't said this publicly to anyone uh, other than right here, but my Paranoia Tapes uh, concept of like what we were doing was stolen uh, by another filmmaker. And people like, but I'm not going to say their names on here. Okay. But I will say if you are watching, we know what you're doing and you won't get away with it. You know, and that's the thing with me is like, you know, maybe somewhere down the line, this filmmaker and I can come to an agreement. But until that point, like, I, I'm going to call them out. If I see them at a convention, I'll call them out anywhere. It's, it's like they're these people. Um, God, I got I got to be positive because who I represent. So I'm trying my best here. Everyone listening and watching. Uh don't steal ideas, okay? May, if, you, if you are inspired by an idea, then, then, then say you're inspired. You know, because what would, if he would have, or she, or God, obviously it's a he, uh, but if, if they would have said this film was inspired by this, instead of completely copying me, mm -hmm. and not, not, not my name or my brand, but the title of it and then asking for found footage shorts, you know, like that's what we do. This person never dived into found footage ever in his entire career, no matter how many shitty films he's made or whatever, he's never gone that route until recently because he's trying to jump on the coattail. And that's what this, this filmmaker does is they will ride that coattail of what's hot. You know, and I think all these, these quote unquote ideas are crap. And I think people need to realize, you know, being a filmmaker, you don't have to make a movie about current crisis, you know, like stuff that's going on in, in the world. Like don't right at this very moment, don't make a movie about it, you know, let it sink. You know? and, and, and if you're going to make a movie, have it be a little bit better quality. You know, that's another thing. Like, if you're going to have horrible CGI effects, why even attempt it? You know, we're in quarantine. Adjust those, those, those CGI moments. You know, make them worthwhile, not some app downloaded on a phone. You know, make it, make it worth, 
the $7.99 or $12.99 rental fee that people are going to pay to watch it, if they even pay anything, if it doesn't get pirated, you know? So, and that's another thing. I'm against pirating. Oh my God, I hate pirating. And I will admit, I have pirated. I'm guilty of it. But I stopped because once I became a filmmaker, I realized the impact uh, of pirating and everything. I'm not, not, and the thing is, I'm not knocking you or knocking anyone that does it because sometimes you don't have enough money. But I am at a point in my life with my career that I do have the funds to support my filmmakers and, and get all these streaming services. Now, if you don't, I'm not knocking you. You do what you do. But later on, buy that film. You see it in, in, in the store for you know, $5.99, buy that film. You know, just make up for it. And that's what I've tried to do, you know, my entire, you know, ever since I've been a filmmaker officially, um, is, is movies that I, I, I remember pirating, I would buy. So if I go to like the dollar store, which a lot of films are there now, Blu-rays and everything, I just buy them all because I know I pirated them, you know, at one time or another. So, um, yeah, I'm not knocking you if, 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 if you do pirate or whatever, stream illegally, whatever. I don't, I don't care. I don't care. But I knew, I noticed the impact of it when um, my first film, Paranoia Tapes, was pirated. And I saw it had like over 5,000 downloads or views. Like, to me, that's, um, how can I say? That's like, you know, 399 times 5,000. Yeah. So you put that into that, ex that aspect you know, like here, uh, I'll do it real quick on my phone. I, I can't, I can't believe I'm doing this, but 399 times 5,000, that's night. That's almost $20,000 that could have been in my pocket and, and put food on my kids' tables, you know, on the, on the table. So, you know, you got to look at it at that when they say piracy is a crime, you know, is not a, what's that word? Is not a, a victimless crime. It's true. It's not, it's not, you know, our kids suffer. You know, we're doing, we're, I'm not, obviously I'm not in the film business to make money, you know? So anything that we do get, it goes towards our family or put back into the projects. So with that being said, like negativity and, and filmmakers, there, there's a huge, oh my God, there is there, when you, when you talk about like rivalries and stuff like that, um, it, unfortunately it's huge. And a lot of you guys out there watching this and listening, you don't, you don't see that. You don't see the, the hate that other people give because they're jealous, uh, because of jealousy. Like I had a situation recently with my film Horror Nights uh, back in, uh, was it January or December? Like I had this film edited, everything was good to go. And then I started getting messages about a filmmaker that was once involved with it. He was bullying people. He was making an ass out of himself on, on Facebook and social media. And I was getting screenshots of personal messages that he was sending to people. I had to make the professional decision to not be associated with him. Mm -hmm. So I took his short out and I reached out to a good friend of mine in, in England, Velton Lish. Lish, I don't even know how to say his last name, but he submitted one of his, his shorts and it fit perfectly. It was like there was never a gap in my film ever. Um, so you, what, what I'm saying is everyone out there doesn't see that part of us. Like there's gray hairs. I mean, I don't have any hair, but <laughs> there's gray hairs there because of stress that, we, that, that happens to us um, that we get you know, from other filmmakers. And I support everyone. I support everyone to the extent of, if you have an ear to listen, I'll give you my advice. Mm -hmm. If you want my advice, I'll give it to you. But what pisses me off more than anything, and this is not an ego thing. I've been in the industry over 17 years. It took me 17 years to get to where I am, where I am now. A couple of weeks ago, my film Horror Nights was the number one horror movie in the United States. It took me 17 years to get to that point. So everything has not happened overnight. And um, I was a part of a project that I kind of, like, I liked. I liked the idea. I liked the concept of it. Mm -hmm. um, and I read the script. But 
the, the, the film, the quote unquote filmmaker, I, I say that loosely, so I'll do it in quotes. If you're listening on audio, you can't see, but there's air quotes right now that I'm doing for filmmaker. Um, there's professionalism and there's, and then there's uh, disrespect. Mm-hmm. And the fine line between that is when you ask for advice, and you get the advice you asked for, and you, you're supposed to listen to it, you know? And that's what I was saying, like, you know, I've been in the industry over 17 years, so they're asking me for my advice. Now, when I give my advice, I, I would expect anyone, you know, I, I don't like talking out of my ass, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I don't like wasting my breath on something. So I gave them my advice, none of it was used. None of it whatsoever. Everything I said went through one ear out the other. And it was like I never existed. And my, my thing, I don't know if I can curse on here. I think I have cursed already, so I apologize. But, like, why the fuck are you going to ask me for advice and not fucking take it? You know? And the disrespect is not taking it. And it's a slap in my face. You know, when you talk to me about an actor... Because our, our indie horror community is really small. When you, when you, we know a lot about everyone. That A lot of stuff we shouldn't know, but we do know because we all talk to each other. We know who to work with. We know who not to work with. And we hear stories. And then we base you know, our opinions on a phone conversation or a meeting like this. And we, we say, hey, you know what? Okay, you're right. Maybe some of those stories were true. They're just not what we're looking for. So when I'm telling them what I know and what I've heard, because I don't name drop. I fucking hate name dropping. I will not name drop other than stuff with the Romero picture Indie Brigade. That I'll name drop all day. But um, when stuff happens, when I gave you my, after I gave you my advice and you didn't listen, and then you come back to me and you say, I owe you a, you were right. You know, that's like, that's a slap in my face. But also, one of those things, like, I, I fucking told you. I told you this person would be like this. I knew what would happen. I knew what they were doing. You know, I, I, after that moment, well, I had already left the project. But after, after realizing all this stuff, I left the project because there was no communication. People were dropping out of the cast. They, they recast people on IMDb without telling the original people that were cast. That's like, dude, that, that, that is unprofessional. It is. And, and, and there's an online campaign going on right now with it. And I told this person, this filmmaker, I said, stop your fucking campaign. Give these people back their money. You know, they're putting perks up there about cast members that aren't even involved anymore. You know, and these other people left because of the unprofessionalism. So you need, people need to fucking listen. You know, if you're going to ask for advice with, with intense, um, with in-depth, you know, knowledge about the scene, the indie scene, then fucking take it, you know? And, uh, you know, and everything with this project is doomed. I'll say it right here. The script is a ripoff of every single 90s slasher film. You know, like, there's stuff in the script that is line for line for other, from other movies. When people watch this, they're going to be like, what the fuck is this? You know what I'm saying? Like, this isn't paying homage to it. This is a ripoff. And I told, I've told the filmmaker this. I said, you need to fucking change it. And uh, nothing, absolutely nothing. Oh, well, a lot of slasher films do that. No, they don't. No, they do not. They do not rip off other films. They may take the idea of someone killing everyone, blah, 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 great. You know, it's a whodunit scream mystery. There you go. That's what it is. But they don't fucking take the words written from Kevin Williamson himself and put it in your movie. That's stealing and plagiarism. You don't do it. Sorry. I get, I get really pissed off when I think about it, man. I get what you mean. Now, um, Sorry. I'm getting hyped. I'm getting hyped. You're good. You're good. I, I get it, too. And, like, I see it. It's crazy because, like, again, when I got into this podcasting thing, mm-hmm. I started it two years ago now, this past January. But it just 
it started with just me, some close friends, and some family just, you know, recording, talking horror. And it branched mm-hmm. off from that to, you know, getting people coming on, other guests reviewing movies, and then it started getting to mixing in with the indie scene and other podcasters, which is great. And I, I enjoy it all. And I'm like one of those people, 100% positive all the time, simply how the indie brigade is. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, the crazy thing is, is when you see how much negativity is in the indie horror scene and even in the, yeah. and even in the podcast scene, like, Oh yes. It's not talking. Like I have no issues with anybody, honestly. Right. Right. Like I said, there's people that I don't talk to anymore, but I still don't consider that like an issue or a quote unquote beef. It's just, you know what? We had a falling out and there's no point in fixing it. Just if it, if it, fine. if it doesn't affect your life personally in any way, then it's whatever. Real, yeah. It's not a real issue. Yeah. If it doesn't yeah. affect me in a real way, it doesn't more importantly, it doesn't affect my family, my loved ones then it's not, it's not an issue. It's not a real issue to where it's like, we have, ish, we have problems. I need to really go handle this. It's more of like, you know, just brush it to the side. But yeah, mm-hmm. I've seen it. And it's just, it's crazy. Cause they'll be like, you shouldn't talk to so, I mean, I get what you're saying, but it's like, you shouldn't talk to so-and-so and they don't say why. And usually it's because one person, like say, I'm trying to think how to explain this. Like say one person has an issue with a one person or a group of people for, for whatever reason. It, but right. it, nine times out of 10, it's, it's not, it's not serious to the point of where I should stop talking to them or you should stop talking to them just because you guys had a disagreement or you guys had an issue. Cause right. it's, not, it's not like this part, you know, it's not like this part. Okay. Well, this person's coming here. They're screwing people over doing this, 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 and this. It's just, they had a disagreement. So because we had a disagreement, you shouldn't be cool. I'm like, no, it's, it doesn't, for me, it doesn't work like that because no, well, offense, no, yeah, yeah. To, to an extent I'll say, depending mm-hmm. on the issue. Again, usually I don't know what the issue is ever. I don't. And honestly, if it's not, Different from what you're talking about with filmmaking. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. I understand, like, if it's people stealing ideas and stuff like that, but Mm -hmm. sometimes it's just people don't like each other for whatever reason the case may be. They don't like each other. They expect school days. You know how, like, when your friends had an issue, it wasn't even a serious issue? Clicks. Yeah, it was clicks. It was all clicky. It's click. You shouldn't be cool with this click. And I was the type of person, and I'm still the same way. I'm cool with everybody until you do me dirty or do something that I care about dirty. Then it's like, all bets are off. Fuck it peace out i'm done yeah and it's i feel like it should be similar the same in adulthood but at the same time i think the bad thing about the whole social media shit and the indie scene with podcasting and uh films is again how we were talking about how you'll you'll see a post about people on facebook oh i'm not doing this anymore i can't work with these people anymore and they'll name drop in this you should yeah. um, like we're adults you could if say me oh use me and use say me and you have an issue okay. Me and you had a disagreement, whatever the case may be. Me and you discuss it. We're like, you know what? Maybe we're, you know, I'm not going to talk shit about you. If you don't talk shit about me, we're just not going to work together. But then, yeah. and so let's, let's just say, I just, I use this example all the time. Let's say you were in the wrong. You go by that agreement. Say you fucked up, you go by that agreement. But I'm the one who's making posts like, hey, fuck Jack, you know, Jack, da, 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 da. Yeah. I think that's just child. It's stupid. It's childish. And it's like, if you yeah. have an agreement, be adults enough, talk to each other. If you can't agree, if you can't get along, you can't. Agree to this. Hey, and if people ask you about, it, say people ask you about it off air. Hey, do you still talk to so? Do you still talk to Sir Thirty? No. Simple as that. We had a fall. Yeah. Out, but you know that's no matter no matter how serious. I mean, if it's serious, yeah, we had a falling out. Mm-hmm. This is why. Or we had a falling out. Yeah. It wasn't that serious, but we're just we just agreed not to. We're not going to bash each other. We're not going to work with each other. It's just fine, and that's how it should be. Well, the thing is, the thing is with 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 filmmakers is you never get that opportunity really because they some the ones that that I that I'm speaking about behind the scenes is they'll block you. Okay. You know, you never get to that point of being able to express your feelings. You know, and that's when like. And then they start saying stuff like, oh, I can't believe you sent me this from his site. He's a bully. He's a bully. And then he calls and cries to other people. You know, like, you're a fucking prick. You need to face me like a man mm-hmm. and talk to me, you know? And like you're saying, there's a difference between podcasting and filmmaking. You know, like, if people ask me about a certain filmmaker that still steals my ideas, um, I'm going to say, don't fucking work with them. You, your, your intellectual property will be stolen, Understood. you know, Very, you know? Yeah. So that, and that is a professional statement because yeah. it's protecting you and your friends. You're asking me personally, what do you think about this person but, uh, with, with business? 
but with but that being said though, I'm sure like you would do that either if it's safer safe for you doing it on a podcast, you would do it as far uh-huh. as streams or whatever, you would do it off camera, like off the air. Oh yeah. Or oh. In yeah. Front, you wouldn't be like out here like, oh, don't work with Nicolas Cage because he's a terrible actor. Had to Hold up. <laughs> it's the bees fault. It's the bees. It's the bees, damn it. But anyways, but, yeah, I, I would never do it publicly. Uh, I actually, I don't even like typing it because screenshots, yeah. you know, that's when I say, when I, when I talk to people, when they ask me questions about certain people in the film industry, I say, here's my number, call me or call me through Facebook or whatever. So, I mean, the chances of it being recorded is slim to none, but still like I can tell them over the phone, I'm not going to name drop in a conversation on, you know, on what, yeah. because it could be recorded or I mean, it could be screenshot. I'm just, it's people, professionalism. I've learned my lesson, you know, people, Hey, you know, Jack said, uh, Nicholas Cage should win Oscars for every movie. I'm like, yo, he's lying. He should, he should. <laughs> I mean, he fucking should. Now, granted, Ghost, Ghost Rider Part 2, what the fuck was that? So that's all I'll say. Uh, Wicker Man was amazing. Everything else recently, I don't know what the fuck he's doing, but he's making money. So, yeah, you know. Yeah, he's making money. I, <laughs> I just wish he would just, you know, just – here's what it is. People know <laughs> in a Nicolas Cage, right? Like I have friends, I told you, that come on the show, we'll review movies. So if he's – and obviously I have a horror podcast. So if he's in a horror movie – Guess what they want to do? Hey, Sir Sturdy, let's review the like, Why? <laughs> let's review Mandy. Let's review Color Space. Let's review uh, Dads. Let's review, God, how many Nicolas Cage movies in the last year? <laughs> so- the thing is, is I will do it, and I will give my honest opinion about it. And, like, I did say nice, like, for Mandy, I said nice things about him. I said he had a cool tiger shirt on. That's, that's you know, that's, that's a lot <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen Mandy. I have not seen it. I have Shudder, but uh, I haven't seen it. I, I'm I'm weary because I tried to watch the Color Out of Space mo- uh, show movie, and um, I got bored. I got really really bored. And people, you know, will be like, "You gotta continue." I'm sorry, but even with my films, if you're bored after 15 minutes, turn it off. It's okay, you know. So, you know, like it I, just wasn't me. It wasn't for me. It wasn't for me. And for me, like. I can, if, if it's a movie I'm reviewing, I can't do that because it's like I really do have to watch the movie and give my honest opinion about the movie when I'm reviewing with people, which I do. The thing I do try to do, though, which I got this advice from my brother, is mm-hmm. he was like, Aaron, he was like, listen, when you're reviewing movies and stuff, he's like, I understand there's movies that you could say you hate, you don't like. He said, at the very least, because it is someone's art, at the very least, try to find something positive about it. So I try to do – I make it funny. Like I said, the, the Mandy movie, I did not like it. Nicholas Cage had a cool shirt in it. So I tried to make it funny and, you know, just something, some sort of positivity out of it. But mm-hmm. I can't always be, I can't be one of those people who acts like I like every single movie that comes out because I, I can't, I can't lie to you guys. And I can't, yeah, you're right. You're right. I don't like lying, but there is a professional way to say you don't like it, which is what you, I think you've done. So to an ex- I've got, I'll put it this way. I've gotten better at it. Like, I will be honest. I'll tell you, I don't like a movie. I'll tell you why I don't like the movie. I'll even tell you what I think would make the movie, in my opinion, what, what I would like better if they did this better with the movie or, what you know, certain things. Mm-hmm. And I think that's another reason why I don't touch, as far as, like, reviewing indie movies, I don't touch them too, too much because I don't, mm-hmm. want, to, I don't want to burn bridges or hurt feelings. Uh, I, well, you see, dude, let, let me tell you, with me, I'll just give you my heads up, for, just forewarning. With me, I know some of my films aren't the best. I know the quality is 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 not the best quality but um that's okay and you and you have your opinion so if you say oh i don't like paranoid tapes one but i like you know two five six eight nine ten but you don't like you know three four seven it's okay i won't be offended it's your no, opinion I, I understand that and i think i feel people have tough skin i feel the same way about my podcast i'm sure there's people that listen to podcasts. Yeah. the show sucks hey that's your opinion i'm fine i don't care you're not hurt. Oh, who would say that, Sir Sturdy? I don't know. I'm, I have never had anybody come to me and say that, but I'm sure it's been said. And I, again, everybody has their own opinion. Everything's not for everyone. Yeah. And like with me, with indie movies, like I said, I do, I do kind of watch them different and look at them different if I'm reviewing them because it's like, again, they have a smaller budget. I focus more, which I should do. I mean, you try to with all movies, but I kind of focus more on like what they did for the story. Like, how do they try to tell this story, you know? Yeah. How do yeah. they try to do this, this, and this? 
And then again, if it's an indie movie, but it's like an indie horror comedy, I rate that even different because it's like they were trying yeah. to do this. Like Just, they were trying to look bad for these scenes. They're tr- so you rate it based on that. It's not, but it's. It's just a whole confusing thing that goes on in my mind when I'm watching a movie. It's <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah, same here. As a filmmaker, when we watch movies, we're not watching it as, as entertainment. And it's unfortunate because as a writer, if I can figure out a movie within 15 to 30 minutes, it sucks for me because I'm watching it. You know, not for the entertainment value of like being scared. It's like I can't be scared anymore because of this. You know, I think about it differently. I I, I start critiquing the movie as if, you know, I knew this person personally and like, oh, they should have did, they shouldn't have done that. Like that, this, that's just, you know, why would they put the lighting like that? Like, are they like, why make that move or why write it in this way? You know, that's, that's another thing that goes along with like my advice when people ask me about their scripts or their movies. I know my scripts um, aren't like the most amazing things, uh, but people will say, oh, they're brilliant, whatever, but I'm my own worst critic. So um, I, won't, I won't get upset when someone says, oh, well, it should be like this. But what I do get upset is, uh, is when I send my script out and there's like this long list of things. You know, uh, and it happened recently, um, and I had to go back and change some things about my script. But, um, you know, I, did, I didn't go to film school. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't, I don't like act one, act two, act three, act four. You know, I don't like that. Because once you put your script, I mean, as a writer, into that aspect, it's not fun. You know, because you're forced, you're forced to do things. You know, yeah. oh, something has to be revealed by act two. Like, why can't it just be revealed in the first five minutes, you know, so the audience knows? No, that's not how it, uh, fuck off. You know, like, I don't, I don't play that game. So, yeah, see, wow, I, just, I deviated from the question here. Sorry. I, um, as far as that goes, like, I don't know much about filmmaking, but as far as, like, podcasting and all that stuff, mm-hmm. I've, however you feel comfortable doing your, your filmmaking, writing your scripts, or doing your podcast shows is the way you should do it. For example, there's some people who, as far as podcasts goes, they take a shit ton of notes. I don't do that. I, I'm, more, I'm better off just freestyling. Like I was telling you earlier, just having a conversation. Some people take yeah. all that other stuff, and it works for them. Others <laughs> don't. And I tell people, I'm like, whatever works for you, however your mind – everybody's mind works different. Everybody's brain is yeah. way different. Yeah. Some people taking notes, like for myself, me taking notes, you would know I take notes. You would know if I was taking notes, and I would be reading it like I'm reading a damn book. But yeah. Versus like, I know, you know, just having a conversation, stuff comes out, stuff comes out and it comes out better and all that stuff. And I'm sure it's similar with filmmaking as far as like what you, what you were just saying, you rather do, here's how I want to write my script. I don't want to do act one, mm-hmm. act three and so on. I want to write my script like this. This is how it <coughs> works for me. This is what Absolutely. I'm stuff. And whatever works for you, whatever you feel comfortable with, because That's how I, you do. You do I, you. I feel for anything, once you do it to where the way you're supposed to do it, and I say that in quotes for people who, are, <laughs> who are listening to an audio only, the way you're quote unquote supposed to do it, yeah, you're going to lose passion for it because it's like, oh, I, absolutely. I, I have to do it by the book. And then it's like, you know what? What's the point of me even doing I got into this podcasting, I'll say, to have a great time, <laughs> talk horror, and just have fun, have a bunch of laughs. And that's what I've been doing since day one. And that's how I'm going to be doing <laughs> till whenever. Because once that stops to where I'm not having fun with this anymore, I'm not. Gonna oh, yeah, Ex- exactly. You know, and I, uh, it makes a lot of sense too what you said. Um, I, I, when I think about stuff like, oh, you need to perfect your craft. Of course, everybody needs to perfect your craft. And you don't want to ever stop learning. Like I like to learn new things about lighting and lens and all this stuff. And that's why one of the reasons uh, I'm a part of the uh, Romero Picture Indie Brigade, because on Friday nights, you know, we get filmmakers in there that's done big things and people that's done big things with music and everything else. And um, you, you learn something every day. I don't think someone should master their craft. Like I, I am a jack of all trades, a master of none. Like I play music and I tried to learn music theory, but it was so fucking boring and it was not fun. So 
I just like to play. I play music by ear. Like I don't read music. I play the guitar, drums, bass, keyboard, piano, acoustic guitar, bass guitar, all that stuff by ear. I hear something, I fucking play it or come up with something different. You know, I don't, I don't like to dissect it. Like when you dissect a film, you know, in different lines or why would they say this? Why would they do that? One, in a script, you're not seeing it. You're not seeing it. You're just seeing yeah. it in your head. And if you've never been in that environment, like a small town environment, you're not going to know how it is. You're not going to know how things work. I come from a small town. And when I write things in a script about a small town, like a, uh, a psychiatrist or something, say a doctor's in town, um, and something happens, you, you can personally call them and they can come to your house. That's how small towns work. And the cops and detectives, everything else works very different. And I'm getting a phone. If you notice, this is the Child's Play theme song. Can you hear it? Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm going to end that real quick. Sorry. Uh, that's, that's, see, that's how you know I love horror. I love Child's Play. Um, but um, God, I hate when that happens. Squirrel. Um, happens all the time. But, but yeah, so like small towns and stuff, you know, you don't know. If you've lived in a city your entire life, you're not going to know. You're going to say, oh, it's unbelievable. No, it's not. It's not unbelievable. Everybody in a small town knows every single person. It is a fact and it is a truth. And like in the, the Clerks movie, once you fuck a pickle, you're always the pickle fucker. That's true. You are always the pickle fucker. You know, that, that, that is the absolute truth. And, um, it's yeah. funny to say that about small towns. Cause I just go back to like when I'm not sure how old you are, but I'm sure we're not too far in age. I'm 30. I'm going to be, I'm going to be 35 in November. Uh, 35 in, in July. Oh, okay. So mm -hmm. back when, back growing up, like I'm in, I'm in upstate New York, Albany, New York, mm -hmm. but, um, wait, back growing up, like you're, community knew who you were like you know what i mean like kids so say for example if you went and fucked up 10 blocks down the street or 10 blocks down yeah back to your house before you even get home like everybody oh yeah i seen jack yeah. like chasing those raccoons again <laughs> yeah yeah i was chasing those raccoons and they they were i was hungry my mom said don't come inside till later till the lights go off and drink from the hose if you're thirsty so i was trying to hunt you know, it's killing me some raccoons. Fuck them. So, yeah. But, yeah, the small community, it, it's true, though, with the smaller communities. And even to, a, to another scale, even with, like, a larger community, things are similar to that to where, how you're saying. Yeah. I, I mean, with something smaller, I'm sure you said the doctor comes to your house and all that. But just as far mm -hmm. as everybody knows everybody. Like, everybody. So, it's like, again, as, which is a good thing because back in those days, if you fucked up as a kid or, or you got into some trouble that was, you know, you were into some trouble. People are like, hey, leave this kid alone. He's not doing anything. Mind your business type of deal. Versus now, nobody really knows anybody. So it's like. It's a yeah. Good. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and, and you know what? It haunts you. Like, and that's the thing, too, is like uh, there's an article coming out um, this weekend about, about me in my community to where people are, um, where, where they talk about my my past when i was younger because there was always this rumor when i was around 15 that i had a hit list and this was like two years after columbine oh. and ever since then i've gotten messages through myspace through fucking facebook twitter asking me hey was i on your hit list no there was never a fucking hit list ever ever and people still remember that so in this article coming out I finally get to talk about it and say this never happened in my community. Like, and my community will read it, you know, where I'm from. They'll be like, oh, shit, you know, I've heard about this. It's not, it's not true. What it was was a, was a, a story based, uh, called Faceless, which is actually the next project where we can, we can talk about it if you want. Um, but um, it, it was a short story. I used my classmates' real names in it. You know, I was 15. I didn't really know how to yeah. make up fake names so i just thought it was weird and um then they started to see they started to read it you know throughout the week when i was writing it and they turned on me and you know labeled me a psycho and uh i ended up actually getting kicked out of school for this for writing this story 
uh, because people thought I was insane. You know, my, my, my mom, um, they, they, I was at a private school and they called my mom into the, the office one day without me even knowing. And they said, you either get your son some help or he's kicked out. And my mom said, fuck you. You know, instead of looking at how I was getting bullied and how people were treating me at the time, you know, that's a, that's a lot of my story too, is, is I was bullied every single day, you know, for, well, hell, like six years straight from like seventh grade to, um, to 12th when, when I finally graduated, I was bullied every single day, um, about everything getting called the mo- the worst names. I got, you are gay carved into my truck. Uh, my new truck I had gotten when I was 16. That was like my present to myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and I got my tires slashed and stuff like that. And the thing is, is like, I was, I'm not gay and I, 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 you know, I've been straight, but the fact about how kids were and kids are, I don't know if they're still like that. Cause I think everything's a little bit more embraced now these days, but back then, if you liked a certain band, like I loved Backstreet Boys. I loved NSYNC. I, I went to Britney Spears concert. I saw LFO and, you know, Leanne Rimes. I loved all that shit. Like, mm-hmm. quit playing games with my heart. You know, I was, I was that guy that would sing to myself all the time. That was my friends. Like, I, I, my head in my head was my friends, you know, because mm-hmm. uh, I didn't have that, that many that understood me for who I was and the create, creator and creativity inside my brain and um i would get i would get made fun of just because of that stuff and you know that has been really a driving point for me to do what i've done in film and in writing uh acting modeling doing all that stuff in las vegas you know being in a improv comedy show off the strip in las vegas that was one that was a hell of a big accomplishment for me performing every single saturday night in front of people and um you know, it, everybody has a story and uh, everybody started somewhere. And that's one thing about me that, that that's never going to change is I always know where I come from. You oh. know, I'm, I'm, still, I'm still the Jack that people knew. You know, I've just accomplished a lot of things. You know, I, if, if I do get, ever get that call or that meeting with Hollywood, um, or whatever, whatever may happen in the future, I'm still going to be the same Jack I've always been. I'm just me. You know, I'm just a normal person uh, who just had some success with his talent. And bringing up that, um, I, with talent is I, I like to give opportunity. Yeah. Opportunity is something that I love to do. I got, you know, I, I wish... I would have had the opportunities that I'm giving other people when I was just starting out. Yep. No, yeah. I, I hear you with that. And it's like, <clears throat> I mean, kids, kids can be jerks, especially back then. Mm-hmm. Kids can be jerks. And as far as the bullying thing, it was never like, I was never into it, obviously, honestly, but as far like, like I, <clears throat> a group of my friends, we crack jokes on each other back and forth. That's one thing. That's not, that's oh yeah, yeah. The whole bullying thing, like picking on a kid. Mm. It was. It's always. I don't ever understand it, but I feel it's just the person that's bullying is just not happy with themselves. Agreed. They're, they're putting on an act for other people. There's stuff going on at home. You know, we didn't notice that stuff back then. No, not we at didn't all. notice that. You know, uh, and it, it wasn't talked about. Now it is. Now yeah. it is. I mean. At times, some kids are just straight up. Some people are just straight up assholes. They feel okay. Well, this guy's smaller than me. I can pick on him until they get punched in the face. Then it's a whole another like, oh shit! I didn't think. That oh, was, like, I, I, it's I going on. Yeah. yeah, I've been in situations where I won't say bully, but I've had issues with people, right? And they mm-hmm. were a group of friends, and that's when that one person that you have an issue with wants to be tough. Like, yeah, say something now. Mm-hmm. I'm like, Yo. I'll fight you and all those people. But the funny thing is, is the people that are standing behind you are cool with me too. So it's really not going to, then you tuck your tail. So it's like, it's just, it's, it's not cool to bully people. If you're bullying people, fuck you. You've seen what Jason Voorhees did when people bullied him. You don't want that shit to happen. Right. right? Yeah. I mean, you know, like, and, and when you get, what I hate is when you stand up for yourself online with social justice warriors 
and they label you a bully. Be like, no. You know, like one thing, one situation that happened with another filmmaker of mine uh, that I knew, uh, I'm not associated with anymore, but uh, about a year and a half ago, they were on Facebook talking mad shit to me. Like, I'm a military veteran. I suffer from PTSD, depression, anxiety, ADHD. Uh, you know, the list goes on. So this person came at me crazy. So I'm like, you know what? If I ever meet you, I'm going to beat your fucking ass. You know, you can't, you can't threaten a veteran and think you're going to get away with just ha, ha, ha. No, it's not how we fucking work. We plan, we strategize, and we'll fuck you up. It's just how we're taught. It's in our brain. And then I got labeled as a bully because I was defending myself and reacting to some bitch-ass shit. Yep. You know, and uh, I actually, I took the high road, you know, with it. And, uh, and I, I was like, man, you know, like, I'm sorry. You know, you got to understand where I'm coming from. Of course, you know, it made me look like I was kissing his ass. And I wasn't because I will beat the fuck out of him to this day after all the shit he's done. Like, I'm, I don't play, dude. Like, no, there's I, some shit. Go, I, like, I, I get you yeah. 100% on that. Like, for me. I used to be a hot, a hot head to an extent, like all the way up to mm -hmm. 18, 19 years old. But I talked, my father was like one person that can always calm me down at any situation. Still can now to this day. But he would always sit down and just tell me stories about him growing up. Now, my father, mind you, is 76 years old, grew oh, up wow. in North Carolina. So you can only imagine okay. that's where he was born in. Oh, the South. Yeah. The racism and all the bullshit he had to deal with then to the petty bullshit I was dealing with, you know, in my teen years to where. Yeah. Yeah. It was just like, you know what? It's not even that serious. Like, you had to go through all that, and you survived it. I was telling I've told them plenty of times. I said, I don't know if – I said, Dad, I said, I don't, honestly, if I was born back then, dealing with all that, yeah. I, don't, I'd be, I don't know if I would have survived or not, just because of reacting. And you right, had to, like, right. So it's just – it's one of them things where, like, I take it – you know, as a kid and as a young teen, you just take it as, like, your parents just saying this, whatever, whatever. But as, once you get older, as you know, once you get older and you're an adult, and then if you have like younger siblings or younger cousins or in your case, children, mm -hmm. nephews are like, I don't want to, I don't want to, I want to be there for them. I don't want to be doing dumb shit because this person's pissing me off. I, I can go slap to right. easily, yeah. but is it really yeah. worth it? And, 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 and fighting, honestly, man, like fighting is tiring. Like <laughs> it's fucking tiring. Like, yo, look, look, I, I got like a good, maybe two minutes and then that's like, yo, listen, man. right. I'm done. Well, I, I mean, once adrenaline kicks in with, with yeah. a certain situation, you'll be good to go. But with the bullying thing, I, I realized something last night, too, and I rewatched it, uh, To Hell and Back, the Kane Hodder story. And he made, he made a very valid point. And it was about, he said, you know, when, people are, when kids are being bullied, they're told, fight back. But the thing is, when you're in that mode, you're in that mindset, and you're the one being bullied, it's not that easy. And I felt, and I, and I remember to this day, just looking at my bully in the face, like with my fist just gone, like, like just, just, just so red, because I, I was, I knew what I could do. I knew if I would, it would have ended then. But when you're getting bullied, you know, kids commit suicide, not because they're weak. It has nothing to do with weakness. It's because they feel like shit. You know, it's a mindset. And it's something that needs, it's, I think it still needs to be addressed to this day with bullying and everything else. Because uh, some people, it has nothing to do with them being weak, you know, thinking they gave up. It was just because they couldn't deal with it. And, you know, at the time, back then, getting bullied, when you would complain about it, people would label you as the problem. You know, oh, just walk away. Oh, just, just, uh, just ignore them. It's not that fucking easy. Okay. It's never easy. And if you get bullied by someone and, and are out there and someone's listening or you're a teenager getting bullied and you're listening to this podcast, reach out, get some help, you oh. know, uh, absolutely call the authorities, you know, tell your dad, because if your dad finds out a kid is bullying, since something's happening, at, happening in their home. So the dad's going to go there, talk to the dad, beat his ass, and be like, don't you ever let your kid ha you know, touch a finger on, you know, on my son again. You know, that's how it should be. I think I'm probably not the most logical way to do it, but that's how you do it. If, 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 I go, if my kid is getting bullied when he gets older, if he gets bullied, I'm not going to go fuss at the kid. 
I'm going to beat their parents' ass because they allow their son or their, da- their daughter to treat other children like that. You know, it's, it's going to get real. And that's how I think they should, you know, you, they should be handled. I coming from with that. And I would say at the very least, if I was in that situation, what I'd do is go talk to the parents. Like, listen, this is what's going on. And, you know, my mm-hmm. co- you know, whatever, whatever the case may be. And then once, once that happens, if it keeps going on, I'm like, listen, either handle the situation or I'm going to handle the situation. Cause my son does have an older brother who is ready, mm-hmm. ready to let him loose type of deal. Oh but, yeah. But yeah. going back to what you're saying about the whole bullying thing, as far as like people, kids, like, you know, reach out to somebody for help at the same mm-hmm. time. If you see a kid getting bullied and you're another kid standing there, step in. Oh, Just definitely. Step. Yeah. yeah. You will. Kid. You will gain a friend for life, and you never know. That kid that's being bullied might just end up being the richest person in America, and he's your best friend. I'll say this. Because they'll always remember it. I'll say this right here. Uh-huh. And to this day, it's not like a fear fear, like a real fear, but Mike Tyson used to get bullied as a kid. This dude Uh-oh. is three years old, and I seen a video of him throwing the mitts. I was scared. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> sorry my vape yeah no i get it dude he was like yeah like i can't even do that I'm, I'm 34 years old and i can't even throw it that fast and dodge like i'll throw my back out by doing the moves he's doing just, you know just from the wind is gonna knock me out oh it's flying yes out. absolutely uh-huh. yes so i'm just like that that kid that you're bullying yeah god forbid they grow up to be as far as the talent, not the trouble that Tyson got into. He's way better yeah. now. But the talent, yeah, yeah. And, and they coming back to him like, "Oh, what do you have to say to me now?" It's like, nothing. No. Oh, dude, I'd be like, "What the fuck? My bad. I'm sorry." You know, but uh, oh, it would be yeah. So yeah, so kids, teenagers, if you see somebody getting bullied right now in your school or when you go back to school, step in, be the bigger person, you know, and, and stand up for them because you never know. It when life, huh? I said it, the most important thing is it could save a life. You yes, can, absolutely. He's just like, hey, you know what? This kid's not bothering you. Leave him alone. Exactly. Or and if you see him throwing punches, you grab your fist and you go ham on the person doing it, and then you tell the teacher or principal or whatever what you did. And I think, in all honesty, everything's like video recorded. So in schools, so if, if they see you sticking up for someone, you're more or less likely just to get like an afternoon detention and that's it other than getting a suspension or something. I've, so like the, another thing real quick before we get back into the horror stuff, like the way yeah. I raised is like, especially by my father, my mother more, my mother would tell me the same, but more my father. Cause it's, it's different when your father tells you, he was like, listen, don't pick at anybody. Don't mess. Don't ever pick on any people. Don't ever mess with anybody, but don't let people know yeah. somebody puts their hands on you handle it don't ever start he's like don't ever start in a situation if you if i mm-hmm. hear you started the fight it's gonna be me and you pretty much oh yeah oh, definitely oh yeah but if you're sticking up for yourself you, you that's what i need you to do that's what i want you to do is stand up yeah i don't ever want anybody to push you around and if you don't know how well i'll teach you yeah you know like and and get you i wouldn't say karate karate is more about like handling you know diverting shit i'd want to get him into like taekwondo where a guy throws a fist and the next thing you know he's on the ground and you're he's begging for you to stop so but anyways yeah sorry so that got really deep everyone we're talking about my history of bullying and this psa on don't do this you know what's funny about this show though is like here yeah. we, i just had an episode i think yesterday it was where mm-hmm. We'll be talking horror, we'll be joking around, and then something will come up. We'll have like a serious conversation, and then get back into the funny stuff. It it happens, and it's it's a hell, it's good though in a sense because it has people. You know, people look for something say, for this type of show for entertainment, so they're yeah. getting entertainment out of it. But then they're getting that gem out of it. That's what that's something I try to do. But when it comes up, I don't try to just force it. When it comes up, I want people to pull that gem out as well as yeah, and enjoying it and like oh, I want to come back and listen to the show. But you pull that gem out. And use it in your regular life. Oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. And, and, it, and it, it goes back to the point, uh, the bullying and everything else, is that as a film, you know, I'm a filmmaker and other people are filmmakers too, is the reality that we're just like you. Yeah. You know, we just have, we just get paid to do what we love and, and create. 
stuff that we love and have always loved. Um, and, and it comes back to opportunities, you know, giving opportunities to people that never would have had a chance, like the underdogs. Um, that's why I love uh, my, my Paranoia Tapes franchise. I would, and here, here's the truth too, is uh, probably 80%, 85% of every single Paranoia Tapes is not my footage, but it's my brand. And I'm giving the filmmakers an opportunity to be a part of something greater. Because how I, how I found Paranoia Tapes 2, 3, 4, I'm looking at the posters as we're going, uh, 6, 7, Eight, yeah, and eight and some, somewhat of nine, because I filmed that myself. Um, those shorts in the films were done by talented filmmakers that never branched out other than YouTube. Yeah. You know, and they would have never been on Amazon Prime because they wouldn't have the money to do it. They would have never been on a DVD worldwide, uh, have subtitles in, in, in Chinese, you know. So... You know, I, I, I give opportunities, man, and I love it. I do love it. And, you know, people will say, oh, well, Jack, you're, you're being kind of conceited. You put your name in every title. But the thing is, is I built a brand with my name. I, you know, when – huh? Oh, go ahead. You off, but I understand you 100% there because, like, what I do with this podcast is similar to the sense of I have people come on here, and now that I have the green screen, to promote yourself but you're also coming on you know it's an opportunity for someone to come on my show and promote themselves it helps us both out because then they're like hey you should go check out this show mm -hmm. he, he really helps out you know horror fans not just indie horror fans but like a horror fans to give them a voice like other horror fans that want to come on here and review a movie yeah awesome because you there's like i'm a huge fan of podcasts and not mm -hmm. i'm not, all podcasts i feel a lot of podcasts awesome podcasts but not every podcast gives fans other horror fans or whatever type of fan there for that genre to come on mm -hmm. the show and to discuss whatever that topic is whether it be reviewing a movie or whatever the case may be sometimes mm -hmm. it's just them in their group or they just work with just you know people in the indie scene and, yeah uh, yeah but me i'm like i love talking horror why not have other people right. that love talking horror because it gives them that voice and then it makes other people want to check your stuff out because it's like like what you do oh wow right. he's giving other filmmakers an opportunity Yes, his mm -hmm. name's on everything, but it is, but it is your, it's your brand that's going on. It's just like Paramount. Right. Paramount might give somebody an opportunity, but it's still going to be Paramount in the Paramount Pictures. Yeah, right. Exactly. You know, it's, it's, it, it's, it's a fine, it really is a fine line um, from looking from the outside in. It's a fine line of like, okay, is this person just trying to promote himself or is he just trying to promote other people? Um, but yeah. with my film, yeah. I, huh? it's, it's for to me for for me i'll say for what i do it's both yeah. because yeah yes you are trying to help out somebody for other people or however many people you have for your movies and for me with my show however people i have for my show but at the same time it's like you're trying to build your brand and make a name for yourself and you know go from there and just it's both it's right both. right you, and right. yeah no i i i and and piggybacking on that uh, opportunity I don't what I don't like other than like my in my company Southern Cycles Productions LLC you know I have my producers and my executive producers that's my team yeah. okay but when it comes to production and everything else when a filmmaker puts himself and everyone else in a box and only works with those same people over and over and over and over I think it limits what you can do. Uh, there's a show that's done that, but they brand they eventually branched out, and that's uh, American Horror Story. You know, the first couple seasons were the same people, but then they branched out and brought new people in, people taken out, and it works amazing. Um, but when when filmmakers do that, it makes other people feel like they don't got a fucking chance. You know, and I've talked to filmmakers. I said, hey, how can I audition for this? Oh, you can't. Why? Because I use my other, my, my same people. And I'm like, how the fuck do you know what I can do without giving me an opportunity? I might be better than half those fucking people you got in your film. You know, and I want to say that I can't because it's unprofessional, but that's how I feel. And, and when people come to me, oh, well, 
is your movie cast? Yeah, we had private auditions. That's different because we knew what we were looking for and we knew these people had this certain talent. Mm -hmm. Now, we can definitely have them still audition and come up with a role later on for them, but we're not being snobby or, or anything. We just know what we're looking for. But when you use the same people over and 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 over, and over it, it's just tiring to see. You know, you get, you know, one person that stars in every single one of your films, like, come on, bro, give someone else an opportunity. You know, like, be a better person. Be a genuinely good person professionally and morally because you got to give other, other people an opportunity just like with this, uh, this new thing I'm doing that we could probably transition to real quick, just to piggyback off of that. Oh, okay. I, I could be wrong. I could be hundred percent wrong, but I feel like I am right. In some cases, I feel with that, as far as using the same people over and over, I feel like for some people, not all, it's just that comfortability. Like I know what this person's strengths are. I know what these people's weaknesses are. So I can do this, this, and this, but at the same time, it holds you back because you're only going to get your name out so far. Yes, you, yes, you'll have your fans that'll put your name out there, mm -hmm. and then you'll have that same people you work with. But if you work with other people, boom, I work with boom. these people. Now there's more people. It's not that I'm saying I'm not going to work with you guys again, but I'm going to work with these guys over here as well. And then, hey, you guys, well, since I'm working with these guys, these guys will want to work with you guys when, when, you know, when they do their own thing, and it just kind of – it just kind of moves. It just kind of moves and yeah. each other out instead of just oh, the same, same thing. I agree 150% with you. You know, you, you got to branch out and you gain a new audience every time you branch out with new people because your fans from your other films are going to follow you and then you'll gain new fans and followers from them. And the thing is, and also with that is I want to touch on is don't, cast someone just because of their fame yes. you know don't do it just because of who they are when i approach someone or a celebrity to be in my film it's not because of what they what they they're following it's because i know what the fuck they can do i know they'd be, they'd be i know they'd be gosh I know, see, I'm getting, I'm getting, you get, this is the loose cannon. Uh, I know that they would be perfect for the role because of the diversity that they've shown throughout their career. Now, is it a positive that we will gain the followers of them? Yes, that is a huge positive. Uh, but I don't go after a name just because of their name. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to go out for, I mean, I would love to pitch Arnold Schwarzenegger to be in an indie film. That would be great. The following we would have would be, we'd reach our campaign goal in less than a day. You know, but I'm not going to do that because one, I mean, well, wait, I would do that. I would reach out to, but what I'm saying, I wouldn't use them for that reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. If I think they would be, if Arnold would be perfect for a role in my film, I'd reach out to his agent and see what we could work out. That would be great. But yeah. I'm not going to do it just because, oh, it's Arnold Schwarzenegger and give him the smallest role possible because of price. You know, I, I won't do that. Yeah, no, I get what so. you. I get, I get, it makes sense. It definitely makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you feel as far as like? Because <clears throat> I'm sure you have a decent sized following now. As yeah. I have a decent sized uh -huh. following now. How do you feel your influence on people that follows? Do you feel you really influence people to an extent of your pol like, for example, your political <laughs> ideas? Um, not so much. Like, how does that? Well, honestly, this is, this is my honest opinion, and I will stick to it and say it in every interview, is that I don't believe politics belong in film. Um, I don't believe that uh, as, as a person that I am should – oh, God. It's also putting in a box, too. I hate when – filmmakers get out there oh if you support this person get the fuck off my friends list i have no reason to be friends with you you know i i think the professionalism should never include politics ever you know you might support trump you might not don't fucking say what you do you know i i don't the the only thing with with politics that I, I that I do stand up for is bullying, and that bullying meaning when when other 
parties on each side start calling names. You know, lip tards, Trump tards, you're in a cult. You know, you drink the Kool-Aid, that type of shit. I get in there and I say, stop, fucking stop. This has nothing, you know, th- 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 you shouldn't even be discussing this stuff because it'll make you, it'll ruin friendships and, and, and uh, business partners quicker than shit. So I stay away from it. And my friends know who I am. They know who I support and who I don't support, you know? And that's all, it doesn't even matter to, it doesn't even matter to them because they're my real friends. They love me for me. And that's the way this world should be. That's the way every part of entertainment should be is love. You know, one thing that pissed me off uh, because it brought politics, I think, to the Academy Awards, you know, uh, whether you support him or not, when Robert De Niro got up there, got a speech right when he said he starts it off like, fuck Trump. You know, I'm watching a show for entertainment, not to have yeah. political sides thrown in my face. You know, I support who I support and I don't support who I don't want to support. You know, it, whether or not I agree with him or not, just because you're on that platform doesn't give you the 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 platform uh to do it to say stuff like that people watch you as an entertainer you know i am no political analyst and neither is half the people in hollywood uh unless you got a political degree which doesn't even make any sense anymore these days uh because you're going to follow whoever you want to follow i don't think this stuff should be projected to your audience uh, my, my, my films and my shorts and my, my series, whatever, will never support or not support a political figure. Now, you may have politicians in the film, oh. but, but it's never discussed whether they're, you know, uh, a Republican, Democrat, Libertarian, and all the others. It's never discussed. So me as an influencer with my films and stuff, no, I, I step away from it. Honestly, uh, and like I said, only step up when people start bullying each other. And I say, hey, guys, let's play nice. I don't think it has any part or any role in entertainment to be political. I think, it's, I think it is a bullshit thing to do. And it's a bullshit stance. You know, when you say, oh, I'm not going to be friends with you because, you know, you support Hillary Clinton. See, you know, I'm, I'm in the middle you know. as far as like, I do feel if you have a certain opinion, State your opinion to an extent, but there's, there is a time and a place for it. That's one thing I do. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. There is a time and a place, like, for example, like you're just saying, if I'm going to watch an award show or we're going to watch a certain thing, I don't mm-hmm. want to hear about it. But at the same time, I, it, it, it's, it's, it's a hit or miss type of thing because I guess with, a cer- with certain platforms, you know people are going to be listening versus – so I get it, but there is a time and a place for it. Mm-hmm. And then the bigger – the bigger thing with me is the more personal thing where it's like how you're just saying people arguing, like, I don't mind debating. I, I don't debate politics because I don't know politics. I don't mm-hmm. mind people debate, but it's like when you're, once the debate starts calling, once you start calling people name calling, once that gets into it, to me, the debate's over. You lost the debate. Oh, yeah. Like that's yeah. Not debating. That's just bashing. Oh, well, you know, the left this, the right this, blah, blah. No, mm-hmm. shut up. Like the first thing you do is call names. Why can't you just say, look, listen. I'm a Republican because I'm a Democrat Mm -hmm. because of these Mm -hmm. policies, because of these policies. Right. Leave it at that, which we discussed. I don't want to get too much into politics. So I think it's all bullshit Mm -hmm. anyway. Yeah. 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 I will say this last thing, which I did mention, which we mentioned earlier before we started recording was I Mm -hmm. feel with policy and I could be hundred percent wrong because I know nothing about politics, but I feel it's kind of stupid how we have this side and this side. We should just have one thing. It's say we vote for, there's 10 people. There's like a sports bracket. We all love sports. It's like a sports bracket. You know, you go each round, boom, boom, boom. You're knocked out to the final, mm-hmm. the final four, final two, or whatever. But it's, exactly. not, it's not Democrat, Republican. It's just this first, these people, we feel these 32 people are right. We're going to break it down to this. And this is how mm-hmm. it's going. And guess what? Another thing I feel is you should be similar, like retirement age is what, like 65-ish? Mm-hmm. After a certain age, you shouldn't be able to run for politics. I think it's, it's cut off at a certain. It should start at a certain age and end at a certain age because you can get fresh ideas. It's a different generation. Gen- it's it, yeah, because if if you get to that certain age, you're bringing everything from like yeah, from back exactly. Like we cannot view politics the same as we did in the '60s. You know, it's just it's just impossible. So yeah, I, I you know I'm gonna agree with you on that and. 
that's that. Yeah, yeah I agree. Enough with the political talk, because again, yeah, it's, no, yes, it's, it's a bunch of bullshit anyway. Throw it in the trash. I don't care. But uh, now you were telling me about a project, briefly mm-hmm. told me about a project called Night Tales, and I would like to hear more about that. Well, recently, you know, we've been promoting our new film, Horror Nights, that is currently in drive in theaters across America right now. Um, Actually, we have another a premiere tonight, uh, the second night premiere at the uh, Sunlight Urban Mini Drive-In in Austin, Texas, uh, where it's premiering there for the second night in a row. Um, I was approached recently by a filmmaker called David Black, and he is from Australia, and he's, just, he's a really good, like, talented filmmaker. Mm-hmm. And he, he submitted some shorts to me to be a part of Horror Nights 2. And as I'm watching it, I'm like... You know, it, it, they don't fit the tone of Horror Nights, but they're still, like, really good. So I said, hey, I'm going to give you an opportunity. I want to make a whole new anthology with your shorts. <clears throat> we will use your brand. I mean, we'll, we'll use my brand. We'll call it Jack Hunter's Night Tales because originally they're part of this Tales like little, I forgot what it was called, this tales thing. Mm-hmm. And so I, I, I still took that from that. And the shorts in this movie will be all from him. That's awesome. And he's going to get the opportunity for these shorts to be seen throughout the world, you know, because some of them are on YouTube or haven't been seen yet. And that's his only platform. Some have only gotten 100 or 200 views. And that's because he hasn't had that backing. So what we wanted to do at Southern Psychos Productions is give him an opportunity to get his films out there. And this is what you're about to watch, ladies and gentlemen, Jack Hunter's Night Tales. That's great. That's great. I like that you and what people uh huh. So I love that you give you're giving people opportunities. Like you have the platform and the name to give others opportunities, which I think it's the best anybody can do for somebody is help. Absolutely. Here I can, if I can help you out in any way, boom. Yeah. And, and what people don't realize what just happened is this, this, this footage right here, this podcast will be the intro to the film. So people can understand where it came from and how it came to be because, because sometimes they'll watch the film or they probably will watch it and be like, why is Jack Hunter not even in this movie? Why is he, you know, his name in a title? So now they understand. You know, we, we, I, I think it's going to be a great opportunity for David. I sent him the contract. I'm waiting to hear back from him. Um, so, yeah, it's, 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 I don't know who we're going to go through distribution for yet, but I'm really excited about it. And, and like you said, I, I love giving opportunities. I would have loved the opportunity to have, you know, my films or an idea that I had in my brain to be a part of something huge like that when I was just starting out as a filmmaker. I would have loved this opportunity. The same thing like with, you know, um, you know, Paranoia Tapes. You know, the Paranoia Tapes 7, Felt's Field, was done by Jordan Hoover. I, f- I think he's in Washington, you know, and he only had it on, on, on YouTube. Now, granted, it's not like the best, you know, it's not the best Paranoia Tapes film, but it's creative. And it keeps you entertained and you want to know what happens next. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to give him that opportunity to be a part of something big. And we tied it into the original film. Like all our Paranoia Tapes movies, they are all tied back to the first film, Henry, uh, in that film. So they, the opportunity of him being a part of found footage history has been made. You know? That's and, and that's, yeah. Great. And then- I love it. What you just said about how you wish you had that opportunity, I, mm-hmm. I, I'm a believer everything happens for a reason, and that opportunity might not have happened for you then to make you bust your ass harder, to work for it how you are now, and mm-hmm. then for you to know how it feels not to have that opportunity, and you're like, okay, well, I'm going to give others this same opportunity that I didn't get. So it's, it, you mm-hmm. gotta, I look at it, again, sp- putting a positive spin on it. It's like a blessing in the sky. It's like, hey, this didn't happen for me but I've worked my ass off to get to this point to where others that are working their ass off, I can give them a little break of here's an opportunity to, you know, get, get, get your name out there a little bit easier. And then yeah, absolutely. at the same time, hope, hopefully those people, they blow up from it and hopefully they do the same thing and pay it forward to somebody else down the road. And it keeps continuing. And then, which would be great for the indie horror scene. Cause that's how 
and that's how it grows. That's how right. it grows. Just paying it forward, people, and just helping other, helping each other out. Not always looking for a gain for yourself, but looking for like, how can this whole thing grow for all? Not just for me, but for all of us. Mm -hmm. Which I, I, I com yeah, oh yeah, I, I completely agree. How how can it benefit everyone? You know, and that's the thing is one of the reasons it can benefit all of us is because it's another installment into our franchise. You know, their work gets out there. That's only been seen on YouTube by what? 300 people when it gets put on Amazon prime and on DVD sold, you know, hundreds of copies or thousands throughout the world, you know, they would have never had that opportunity. So I love it. I love, you know, I, I busted my ass to get where I am. Like you, like you said, you like, I literally have busted my ass to get where I am today and it has not been easy, but if I can help someone get that easy path that I would have loved back then, you know, to get that step up and that edge, mm -hmm. I, I just love it. You know, it's, it's, it's like one of those things, like in a way it's like, a, I don't say I get off on it, but I find enjoyment and, and pleasure knowing that I help someone, you yes. know, it's one of those good feelings. And I don't like to promote like, Oh, I helped them do this. I did this. I did. No, no, no. They did everything. They lent me their short and I put it in my films. They're the real talent. Like the people behind Horror Nights, Jen Nangle, uh, Robert Bryce Milburn, uh, Joe, Luan, Joe Lujan, Velton Lask, Ben Escobar, Anthony Harriman, oh my God, I'm forgetting, oh, Paul Cal Catalanato, uh, and my producers behind it. Those are the filmmakers. Those guys are the, the stars of this film. Mm -hmm. Like they made this happen without them having the idea in their brain and filming it we would never have the number one horror movie in America. You know, that's just, oh, it's so amazing. I, I love it. I, and, and they are the ones that did it. You know, I pushed it out there. I got it to these places, but without them, none of, the, none of my films or none, Horror Nights would have never gotten to where it is, where it is now. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. And it, it's awesome. Like I said, it's awesome because you're giving others the opportunity to be seen more. Yes, like you said, they put in the work. They do. They do their part. Oh yeah, help them get to that next to that next level, which is great. I mean, it's like it's just it's just how everything should be. It's how this whole world should be. Like, hey, look, I see that you're working your ass off. I'm in, I'm at this platform. I'm in this. I'm in this area. I can yeah. get to at. I can help you get to here or to about here. But you do have to. You do have to do your part. I can't just give it to you. You do have to do your part. Mm -hmm. uh, that's another project we have coming up called uh, Faceless. I don't know if you've been seeing a post about it uh, recently. Um, it stars uh, Jeremy Miller uh, from, he played Ben Seaver on Growing Pains. Do you remember that show? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, well, he played the middle brother. Sorry, just to like sidetrack you. I just told, I, I was like, I don't want to forget about it. I want to talk about Faceless because uh, I mentioned it earlier being the script that changed, being a short story that changed my entire life, you know? Uh, and um, yeah, I don't want to deviate from what you're planning on doing. So I'm just, I'm here. I just want to shout that out. You know, it has a great cast so far and we are excited to do it. And uh, I wrote, the, I rewrote the script in four days. So that's amazing. A 93 page script in four days when I had my kids. So bam, mic drop talent. <laughs> okay. Just to go back from earlier to make a little funny. Did you change the names this time? <laughs> oh, yes, absolutely. No, I kicked them all. I kept them all. No, uh, I think everyone that like dies in this film or will die in it, uh, their real names I know, you know, like the people that bullied me. You're like, oh, I know this person named Greg is really named Tony. You know, like I know that type of stuff, but I'm not going to be, not going to shout that out, obviously. I know, I know. But um yeah no that's a good dig like yes I, obviously i kind of had to check but you know what now as long as i don't put their last names in the film oh i can still use their first names it's just it's just you know it's just there the i the irony or the uh the character well we have to put it in there if there's any resemblance to the original you know to someone per se so but yeah okay so I got a I got a question for you, uh, before uh -oh. soon, and I do want to talk to you after we're done recording. But um, 
That's fine. Yeah, go ahead. What's some advice you would give an up and coming filmmaker that's just, you know, like an up and coming indie filmmaker? What's, what's a piece of advice you would give them to just get started, for example? Just do it. Um, honestly, that is the best advice I think anyone could give anyone. Just do it. Like not to, not to uh, back off or uh, piggyback off of uh, Nike, but you know, there's a lot of talk. People say, I want to do this. I want to do that. Blah, 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 blah. Just fucking do it. And you can use any camera you want. You know, it's 2020. So our phones are more high tech than the VHS camcorders we had when, you know, back in the 90s and early 2000s. I think you should just get out there, do it. You don't necessarily have a, need a script. You know, if you have your idea and you have your friends and you want to make something, just go do it. And, and never take, I had to learn this the hard way, but when someone criticizes your work, take it as constructive criticism because you're going to feel bad. You're going to feel bad when someone says, hey, you know, uh, I, I didn't really care for your film. I think it should have been done better. I think this should have changed, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, so don't take those comments as negative turn it into a positive and fix it because here's a story real quick the first paranoia tapes i wanted to quit i i wanted to absolutely quit i want to quit filmmaking uh because of some of the reviews we're getting on on amazon and my producer executive producer dustin hubbard called me and said jack he's like don't ever say that i'm like why look what they're saying about they think it sucks and they're like jack they watched your movie and I'm like, what? Yeah, they watched. They obviously said it. But then he said, no, Jack, they watched your movie. People are going to read those comments and then watch your movie based on that to see if what they said was accurate. So it gains, it's, it's a snowball effect. You know, any publicity is good publicity when it comes to that, mm -hmm. you know. And um, thank God I didn't stop. I mean, look at your background. Like, look at all these films. We got Her Day One coming out, Blood Camp we're working on, you know, or we're working on Her Day One. So, you know, like, never take no for an answer. When someone says you can't do something, in film sense, everyone, film production, making movies, <laughs> never take no for an answer. Now, in real life, that's up to you, okay? Do, if someone says no, no means no. But when it comes to film, if someone says no, you can't do that, Fuck you. Yes, you can. <clears throat> I like that. That's the best advice I can give. Because, you know, there's a lot of people that say, oh, I want to do this. I want to do that. And then they want to say, well, I would have done this. My counter to that is, why didn't you? Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. I just, because it's just, I know some people listen to it like, hey, I want to do films. It's like, hey, I always mm -hmm. say, again, if you want to do a films or a podcasting to the extent of what you said, our cell phones, you can do your podcast right on your phone. If you don't have any other. Equipment, absolutely. Record right on your phone. You can do films right on your phone. Mm -hmm. And I, oh, I, absolutely. I even go to the extent of saying, put it out there, put it out there on YouTube because yes, you'll get criticism. Like you said, but at the same time, you get to see how much you've grown over that, over mm -hmm. that span of time. Like for me with my podcast over these past two years, yeah. I see how much I've grown from audio only to now visual. And then for my visual stuff, how much I've grown within the past few weeks, just learning mm -hmm. the green screen more. And All right. All right. I know it's a little different because it's me doing an episode and I have to put it out there anyway, but it's just like, you just see how much you've grown over that thing from day one to day, let's say 100 or day one to day mm -hmm. 20 even. You're just, and it's just little, it, it can be something so small that only you notice, but you, you do know you did something a little bit better, a little bit different. Yeah, and better and better at it and then it's just like hey and then and then you never know someone like me or myself will find it on youtube and be like and send you a message hey would you like to be a part of something bigger and greater there you go and boom yep. mic drop you know that that's that's I, I love saying that because i love giving opportunity as we stated earlier mm -hmm. you know get your stuff out there that's some more advice is like you were saying, get your stuff out there, put it on YouTube. Who the fuck cares what they say in the comments? Because there's a lot of trolls. Now you have to, you will have to learn to differentiate trolls and constructive criticism. You know, there, there is a, there, there's a very gray area with trolls and, and constructive criticism. Um, it's just, it's all on your mindset. Mm -hmm. And, and I will say this, it's not easy. 
It is not easy. You're going to get discouraged. You're going to feel like you want to quit. But take me from example, look at this background behind Sturdy. If I would have quit at that first Paranoia Tapes with that skull, the consecutive films that are following around this would have never happened. Would have never happened. There you go. There you go. And it's just, by the way, I love that freaking skull. Where is it? Right there. Yeah. I love this cover Mm -hmm. and this cover. These two are my favorite covers right here. Yeah. Yeah out there awesome but yeah uh, no, you're right about oh, oh by the way that those those covers right there the blood camp and her day one were made by avery crumley uh he's our poster guy that we go through so hi avery awesome. but yeah i'm glad you like it i'm glad you like it but and then going back to what you said about the negative feedback and criticism and all that another thing mm-hmm. you need to learn how to do is try not to respond too much to the negativity because sometimes like yeah people do that for attention not always but there's times where people do it for attention. They want, they want you to respond to them. And, some, and the sad thing about it, sometimes they do it because as people, we respond to negativity a lot more than you will to something positive. But they want your attention, and, and they really might not hate your work. It's just that they're just like pretty much like, hi, say hi to me, talk to me. But instead of yeah. this is awesome, I would love to, you know, maybe discuss this with you further. It's this is garbage. Why would somebody do this? Why would somebody watch this? And then when you respond to them, it's, oh, I didn't mean it like that. I'm just saying, you know, I just wanted, they won't say, I just wanted a reaction. That's pretty much what they wanted. They want a reaction. Yeah. They want, they want acknowledgement. Don't, 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 don't. Oh God. Yeah. Don't feed into it. Don't feed into that. Like that's the thing too. Like there's a fine line between trolls and constructive criticism. Don't feed it. Don't feed the troll. Don't feed the troll. To 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 the same extent, I'll say feed more into that positivity because once people Mm -hmm. see responding to the positive messages like hey someone's like hey i liked your movie or hey i liked your video if it's a podcast or case, thank you yeah appreciate that something as simple as that people will see that and the one the trolls i'll say are the ones that want the attention they'll be like oh well you know what he's all these negative comments on here i don't see them responding at all but all this positive mm-hmm. stuff, yeah you know ton and it's just from absolutely it's it's i guess it's in life too. try not to respond to all that negativity in life just brush it off and you know, yes. Positivity. Absol- yeah. And, and surround yourself with positive people too, because that has a lot to do with who you are uh, and becoming who you are. Like me, I'm part of uh, George C. Romero's uh, uh, production company and, and, and group called Romero Pictures Indie Brigade. Everyone in that group is positive. You know, we, if they're a family too, and you need people like that in your life. I don't think that I would have had this opportunity. You know, hell, we wouldn't even know each other. We wouldn't even be doing this if I wasn't on that show with Lance and Sam Wagner on the Wagner Wiles. I wouldn't be here. You know, it's opportunity that came up that when, you, when, I, when I asked you, I was like, hey, you want to be on your show? You're like, hell yeah. You know, so boom, here I am. You know, it, you got to surround yourself with positive people if you want a positive um, influx into your life. You, you know, and uh, I mean, you can be negative. You can have those thoughts, you know, and if you feel down, reach out to people and tell people how you're feeling about a certain situation. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you, you work it out, but you don't stick in that negative zone. You don't stick in that funk because once you stay in that funk, everything's going to get fucked up. Exactly. It's just, it's just life. I'll, I'll even go into the extent of that of saying as far as what the negativity goes, I understand people have breakdowns. I understand people get mad. I understand people get upset. It's we're humans. Keep it off of social media at the very least. Because then all yeah. is it, it makes it 10 times worse than what it really is. That's one. And then mm-hmm. when people have an opinion on it, if they don't give you the opinion you want to hear, like, again, I'm using you as an example because I know you could take it. You, yeah. you do something stupid. You make a post about you doing something stupid but try to justify it. And then people go ahead and say, well, Jack, you shouldn't have done that. This is why, blah, 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 blah. Then you're just going, you know, then you're attacking those people. And then the one person that says, well, he only did it this one time. It was an accident or he did. But, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to explain what I mean. But some people will make those type of negative posts just so somebody will agree with what they did. Right. Or, yeah. Like, when, when you tra- yeah. Or yeah. Negativity well, instead of trying to switch it on. So it's just like, don't mm-hmm. put that shit on social media. Yeah. Okay. yeah stay away. Personal. Keep your... Um, there's been a lot of stuff that's been going on in my life personally, 
you know, that has not been all positive, but I, I don't post it on Facebook. Exactly. You know, I don't post it on Twitter, on Instagram, because I, I don't want to put that vibe out there. I want nothing but positive. So I'm positive on Facebook. I'm positive with those certain things. Now, don't get me wrong. I might get pissed off and rant about something, but that's different. That's not negative. That's just like, why is something like the way it is? Yeah, you know, or yeah. So it. there's, there's, there's a difference. There's not a gray area. There's an absolute difference. No, there is. So. It's again, going back to that, I feel, I'll say this people, as far as your personal business people, I feel you shouldn't throw that on social media, especially the negative stuff. If you want to post something mm -hmm. positive, something fun that happened, something cool, go ahead and do it. But I say that, like, say if you say, you say, okay, say it's friends you grew up with. You guys are best friends. And for whatever reason, yeah. you're falling out. You're bashing each other on social media. You've been friends for over 20 years. And then yeah. you know, a few months later or whatever the case may be, you make up or a couple years later, you make up. That's going to make you look like an asshole. It's going to make you look stupid. Just keep oh, it yeah. in the Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like, like me talking about those other filmmakers too. Um, that I don't agree with and I despise. You don't see me going on Facebook. You'll never know who the fuck I'm talking about through this podcast because I don't do it. Yeah. I don't name names like that. Uh, now name dropping someone like George and stuff because it's, it's positivity. You know, I want people to check it out, you know, but I'm yeah. not going to, I'm not going to name call a certain filmmaker because of, you know, the way I feel about them. If you like their movies, then cool. Good on you. Uh, you know, I hope you like mine. And if you don't, I don't, I, I don't care. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay not to like my movies. I, I, you know, it's one of those things where I could care less. Does it affect me slightly? Do I dwell on it because one person out of a million doesn't like me? No, I'm good. I got a lot of people that I'm like it. So. Person, I'm at the point in my life now where obviously I'm older, I'm an adult, where it's like, mm -hmm. I don't care what people feel about me at all. As long as my family knows how I am, my close circle, my family, my friends know how I am. Mm -hmm. Everything else doesn't really matter. You know what I mean? As far as like how people feel about me or feel about my show, whatever. The case, hey, that's your opinion. Whatever. <laughs> that's how right. you that's, that's, that's your issue. That's your issue. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, man, like as far, and as far as like, again, where you're saying you have, you have issues with some filmmakers, but that's cool too you're not putting it out there in the public and it's, it's a good thing. And it's a good thing because one day, not only you guys, you guys may or may not make up one day, you guys might make up and work. Right. Out. That's one. Yeah. And two, it's like, Maybe. Uh. and then two, another thing is if you're not cool with somebody, you don't want to promote them. It's like, why, why would I sit here and talk shit about you? If I don't want to promote you. What's yeah. The, Cause then it's like, okay, well, why doesn't he like this part? Let me go check this person out. Let me go check this. Let me get their side. Let me, let me, but you didn't say anything bad. I mean, you didn't bash him. I'm just saying it's like, no, there's stuff. Let me see what, what's going on. Why is he? No, I'm just not going to promote you at all. And that's just exactly. That's part of it. That's now I'm not in the, in the thing too, is I'm not going to block you on Facebook if you don't like my movies either. So I, I'm like, cause a lot of filmmakers will do that. Be like, Oh, you know, they'll take you not liking their movies as you're not supporting them. And it has nothing no. Nothing to do with that. It's just people didn't like your movies. Um, I'll, I'll say this. Every, name, tell me one person that's as many movies as people have watched in you know, the years that we've been born. Tell me one person that's like every single movie they've watched or like every single song they've heard in their life. Nobody. Because every single thing that's made is not made for everybody to watch and everybody to like, everybody to love. You want that, but that's not how, thing, that's not how things work. That's not how life works. Yeah, I yeah, you're you're right. You no one is gonna uh no one is gonna like uh every single film they watch or if every they, single song. If, if they did, I, that's the person I'd go like, wait a minute, how the hell do you you know, how do you like every single I know you want to be positive, I understand mm -hmm. you, I, I get that, but there's no way in hell you like every this is it's just like every single food you tried. You like every single food you've tried in your life? No. If you don't right. like food, you just don't eat it anymore. If you don't like and it's, it, watch it. It doesn't mean it doesn't mean you have to. It doesn't mean they don't support you. That's 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 a fine line too. Yeah. Like they may not like the movie, but yet they went to Walmart and bought it because they support you and your work. And they checked it out. They just didn't like it. Yeah, it's it's, but, it's okay. It's okay. But yeah, man. Um, I guess we can kind of get wrapped up. Yeah. I had an awesome time. Definitely, oh, definitely. Definitely I'll do this again. Mm -hmm. And I mean, if there's anything you want to plug, go right ahead. And then. 
uh, check. You can find me on Facebook. Uh, I have a fan page called Jack Hunter. I think it's Jack Hunter Filmmaker. You can find me there. Uh, SSP underscore horror on Instagram. Uh, we don't really focus on Twitter too much. I think Twitter's dying. Honestly, that's just my thing. I know it's pointless these days because it defeats the whole purpose of what it originally was. Um, you can find us on uh, Facebook, uh, Southern Psychos Productions LLC, and Winter Haven, Jack Hunter's Winter Haven, uh, Faceless on Facebook, Paranoia Tapes, uh, the Southern Psychos Horror Film Festival that we're going to cancel this year. We tried to do a, a sixth one. But with the quarantine, it just wasn't really successful. So we're going to cancel it. Um, so, yeah, you can find us all on there. And, you know, if you want to reach out to me and talk to me, pitch, you, pitch me some shorts, you're more than welcome to. Go on there, like our pages, and send us a message. Uh, we are open to everything. That's how we get a lot of our shorts. You know, filmmakers will reach out to us from hearing uh, us on a podcast, me and my producers. And we might just end up using it. You never know. And, oh, and uh, I did, I want to shout out to Ron Perti. Uh, he's part of the Romero Picture Brigade. He sent me a short last night that we are going to use, I'll be the official announcement on here, that we're going to use for Paranoid Tapes 10 stories from within. So, Ron, there's your shout out, buddy. Yes, and check out Romero Picture Indie Brigade on Facebook and YouTube and every social media site. Every Friday night, you can talk to celebrities and get their feedback on Real life issues and production. Awesome, awesome, man! And that, everything he just said, go check that out, people. Go yeah. Check oh, and it's the ssp.com. It's the ssp.com where you can find all our movies. There you go. And uh, for my regular listeners, again, if you guys still don't know where to find me, I'll keep reminding you on every episode. Horror Research 30 on YouTube, Horror Research 30 group on Facebook. Feel free to share anything and everything horror related, including your own projects. My Horror Research 30 page is strictly for the podcast and, you know, updates what I do in the horror, whatever I do with horror related things. That's the page. I stream now. I game now, people. Horror underscore with underscore sir underscore 30, my Twitch channel. If you ever want to be on an episode, shoot me an email, sturdy. Again, it's horrorresearch.sturdy at gmail.com. Come on here if you want to have an interview, if you're in the horror scene, or if you want to review a movie, shoot me an email and we'll get something going. Uh, everybody stay safe. Jack, thank you again for coming on, man. This was a good time. Thank you. It's been a pleasure and a, and a blast. I love getting real with people. I love it. And as always, I'll see you in your